Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm good, good. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Finally. Good evening, Dr. Arvind. Yeah, good evening to see you, Mr. Nice to see you. So, yeah, finally. Hope, are you able to hear me properly? I can hear you properly, but your video is a bit blurred every now and then. Chiku, is that? Maybe. Yeah, it's okay. okay. I think it's just the network. Yeah, it'll, it'll become Maybe clearer in a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, there's a net. Yeah, network is a bit hazy. Tell me, what are we discussing yeah. today? So, so we are going to discuss how you the how you Ayurveda can help uh, to our athlete or the people who are fitness enthusiastic. So, because every day, like everything, exactly what new thing exactly can alter our fitness or sports culture, sports performance. What will be good? So, thanks to Dakshana who has introduced me. Like we can discuss about. Ayurveda and like how it can help yeah. you. Yeah, and I think. And thank to you to like. The good thing that's going to come out of this conversation is we're going to talk about how East can marry best when we're talking about fitness. I mm -hmm. hope you can still hear me, right? Yeah, because I can the video is blurred again. The video is. Uh... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, your video is buffering to me Let maybe me... because of network. Yeah. Hi Sunny, good to see you also. You are here. Five. You should be able to hear me now and yeah. soon. Yeah. I, your voice is very clear, but maybe the video, the video is, is buffering again. again. There, we're back. All right. Yeah. So, so the good thing. Before going, yeah, without wasting time. Yeah, so the good thing that's coming out of this conversation today yeah. is we're going to talk about how East can meet West when we talk about fitness. We talk yeah. about uh, physical yeah. fitness for athletes from a modern medical perspective, right? And Ayurveda yeah, is a 5,000-year-old science. Yeah. But when traditional Ayurveda science marries yeah. research-based modern science, we have a wholesome, holistic science mm -hmm. that is great for physical health, mental health, and emotional health. Yeah. yeah? Okay. And Ayurveda identifies the human body yeah. as seven different types. And modern science identifies the human body yeah. as three different types. So in modern science, we have three different body types mm. called endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph. And mesomorph. So endomorph yeah. is basically a thick body type where they have heavy bones, thick bones, uh, large stocky frames, mm. and they tend to put on weight easily, but they struggle to lose weight. They have soft, supple, smooth skin and beautiful hair. Okay? So yeah. endomorph body type. Generally, we advise yeah. them to eat half plate vegetables, quarter plate proteins, and quarter plate carbs. Correct? In yeah, Ayurveda, correct. it is called the kapha body type. Kapha means out of okay. the five elements earth, water, fire, air, and space, they're dominant in earth and water. Mm -hmm. They're okay. called kapha. K A P A. Kapha okay. prakriti means you're dominant in okay. earth and water, and it's exactly the endomorph body type. You have a heavy, stocky frame large bones, you tend to be very big, you know, physically, you tend to put on weight easily and you struggle to lose weight. And Ayurveda goes one step forward to say that Kapha Prakriti people tend to have excess mucus and sticky fluids yeah. in the body, which causes them to gain weight, number one. And number two, the accumulation of mucus is felt in the top part of the body, between the nose and chest, which leads to them being okay. sensitive to cold, cough, Allergies, sinus, okay. asthma, hay fever, lung congestion, bronchial disorders, and such. There's a lot of yeah. yeah. All the so endomorph body type will have a susceptibility to bronchial health issues like asthma, hay fever, wheezing, pneumonia, sinus, lung congestion, uh, cold cough, allergies, uh, obesity, weight gain, diabetes, and life. These are uh, one after yes. one other. So that's an endomorph body type, and Ayurveda says that's a kapha body type. Ayurveda goes one step forward to say earth and water which makes kapha, which makes endomorph body yeah. type is sweet, sour and salty in taste. Okay. Yes, it is sweet, sour and salty in taste, earth and water. So that means 
and endomorph body type should eat the opposite to keep the body balanced they must eat foods that are warm and spicy because they don't have a metabolic fire that is as high as a mesomorph for an ectomorph their metabolic fire is very low it's called manda agni in ayurveda low metabolic fire so to keep the metabolic oh. fire high they must have foods that are warm well cooked spicy and they can also have raw vegetables raw salads to stimulate the fire in the stomach because if you have a campfire you put dry leaves in it first then you put twigs and branches you don't put wet leaves in it correct the same okay. rule applies to the metabolic correct. fire in your stomach when the metabolic fire is low in the stomach you will put dry leaves or dry salads in it to stimulate the fire yeah, yeah. so that yeah. is endomorph body type and yeah. you will eat the opposite taste so you will eat foods that are pungent or spicy like chili onion garlic capsicum radish anything when you bite makes your eyes nose and mouth water is called pungent foods okay so for an endomorph body type i would advise them yeah. to eat more spicy foods pungent foods spicy vegetables and eat more bitter vegetables like karela or bitter garlic celery cilantro curry leaves moringa and coffee and they must also have oh. I didn't know. We must also have more as I was yeah, not aware. Yeah, so this is where Ayurveda and modern science can come together to help an athlete perform even better. Yeah, because this I I even I was not aware about this thing like it can be helpful to this is a lean the muscle yes. mass and lean and the like I'll tell you the reason why it is so helpful. Now say an athlete is you know working very hard every day. An endomorph athlete is working yeah. hard very uh, every day. uh he is probably working out like you know he or she is working out 6 hours per day okay so 3 hours of training and uh, you know 1 hour of yeah. cardio and 2 hours of weights and strength and muscle training almost 6 hours of workout per day but the person is struggling to lose weight yes. and the person is constantly catching a cold cough allergy sinus very often which slows down their recovery rate and their progress in building muscle mass yeah because I- Yeah, even like the after that, I think get like tested in and they start to like different different things. Yeah. Like, slow down. But such a day. person, such an athlete who's an endomorph body type, but who's working very hard. So an endomorph body type will have to put in three times more hard work compared to a mesomorph or an ectomorph body type. Correct. Yes. So for them, we change the Correct. diet because eighty percent of it is diet, twenty percent is workout. If the diet and workout works yes. together. the athlete will be able to see better results in terms of body image develop uh, uh, maintenance uh, weight maintenance and also athlete performance so yeah. i would advise the athlete who's endomorph to eat more bitter astringent and pungent foods so pungent like i said are pungent and spicy foods like chili capsicum radish onion garlic uh, bell peppers and such bitter foods are foods like karela which is bitter gourd spinach celery cilantro curry leaves moringa and coffee then we have astringent foods astringent foods are basically dry up the saliva on your mouth and cause the water retention in your body to go down thus allowing your muscles to become tighter reducing water retention so astringent foods would be foods like you know kala jamun the blackberry amla the indian gooseberry blueberries yeah. cranberries raspberries strawberries cherries green apple red apple pomegranate these are they're all astringent fruits hummus pita bread uh maybe not made of hummus chana which is kaburi chana rajma these are all astringent foods that dry up the moisture in your body uh brown rice red rice black rice dal bajra makkhani millets they're all astringent in nature Like, okay. Like okay. 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 Let me check, let me just check one second. Sorry. Let me check if I can just. Yeah. You guys, hear me? Hi, Dr. Arvind. Are you able to hear me?
Hi, Dr. Arvind. Are you able to hear the video is buffering? Yeah, video is buffering. But I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. I hope the video will clear up. I've just switched from Wi Fi to 4G again. And I'm hoping that the connection picks up uh, better now. Hello, good day. Come, come yeah. here. So, body type. Bitter, astringent, and pungent foods. Uh, that's the kind of diet I would recommend an athlete who is an endomorph. Then we have the second body type, which is the uh, morph. Okay. I hope you're able to hear. But the voice is also buffering, I guess. It's buffering. Yeah, can we just connect? Should uh, I go back to Wi Fi? Was the previous connection better? Yes. Mm, voice is there, but like I cannot see the video is buffering. Video is buffering. Okay, let me see if I can go back to Wi Fi if it helps you. I guess Wi Fi was a bit better than this. Are you asking? Uh, hi, can you hear me now and see me better? Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry for this. You're just on light, I guess. Okay, all right. So this is better, yeah. right? I'm going to explain the second body yeah, type okay. now. As per Still the video is both. Ayurveda, yeah. as per uh, modern science. Okay, we can. Hello. Yeah, okay, all right. So the second body type is called mesomorph body type, yeah. which we all are aware of. And in Ayurveda, it's called Pitta Prakriti. So mesomorph is basically dominant yeah. in fire and water. They tend to have a good musculature. They put on okay. weight easily and they also lose weight easily within a few days of workout. And yeah. they tend to have sharp features, piercing eyes. Very good muscle buildup by default, by natural, you know. They have a medium bone structure, not too heavy, not too thin. And they have an oily T-zone and oily skin. Right? Yeah, oily things are very good. And they tend to have an inclination towards inflammatory diseases because of excessive fire in the body, which causes, by the way, uh, issues like, you know, uh, swelling, water retention, bloating, digestion issues. Sorry, that's my niece in the background. She just joined us for the interview. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can't see the video because it's still buffering. Oh, it's still buffering, but you can hear me, right? You're not able to see me. Yeah, I can hear, I can hear very properly. Very okay, clear. all right. So the second body type is a mesomorph body type. And they tend to have a lot of water retention, sudden weight gain, and they tend to also lose weight very quickly within a few days of workout. Hello, Kutta. Yeah, for a mesomorph body type, in Ayurveda, yeah. we say that they have an inclination towards taste like pungent, sour and salty, but they should not eat too much pungent okay. foods, sour and salty foods. Instead, they should have foods that are sweet, okay. bitter and astringent. <laughs> Are you able to hear me, Dr. Arvind? Yeah, yeah, I can hear Yeah, so I would recommend foods that are sweet in taste. So a lot of sweet fruits like melons and oranges, uh, you know, pumpkin, sweet potato, white potato. Mm -hmm. These are all sweet fruits and vegetables. Okay. And a lot of uh, sweet vegetables and also bitter vegetables are good for them. And astringent fruits for a mesomorph body type. It will improve the athlete's performance levels and will also allow the athlete to benefit even faster from their workouts. They will see results from their workouts even faster if they stick to a diet that is one-third carbs, one-third proteins, chicken, one-third vegetables, which is sweet, bitter, and astringent in taste. Again, your voice is Again, my voice is breaking. Let me see if I can go to another spot. Give me a second. Yeah. I'm going to go to another patient and see if it works better. Come, Gudu. Okay, Sarah. So You're going to another spot. Come, Jaldi. Come, Jaldi. 
Hi, is this better? Voice is clear, but I can't see the video. I guess maybe there is some network in my side also. I guess. You can hear me properly. Uh, no changes. Can you see me properly? Hello. I'm able to see you. Okay. So I, I guess we can now? go with the audio only, like maybe. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe uh, we'll take a few seconds. Call, then maybe, uh, I've switched back to Wi-Fi, and I've yeah. also keep uh, kept the four G on. So I'm hoping, like you know, it eventually catches up the video. So, Dr. Arvind, I was going to explain to you the third body type, which is the ectomorph body type. In Ayur yeah. Ayurveda, it's called Vata Prakriti. Because we are getting disturbed on that. Is it still not working? Uh, are you able to hear me? Mm. Yeah, I can be able to hear you properly. Okay, all right. So, the third Prakriti, as I was saying, is the Vata Prakriti, or the ectomorph body type. Where the person has thin bones, a uh, light okay. body frame, and they tend to have dry, rough skin, dry, rough hair. They rarely put on weight. In fact, they struggle to put on weight. They have irregular metabolism, wherein they feel hungry very quickly sometimes, and sometimes they can go without any appetite for you know hours together. And that's an ectomorph body type. They don't have good muscle mass, and the bone density is also not much. And they have an inclination towards muscular skeletal disorders like. Osteoporosis, arthritis, rheumatism, spondylosis, uh, joint disorders, back pain, neck pain. They also have a tendency towards overthinking, you know, psychosomatic uh, issues also. So this is a kind of imbalances that an ectomorph body type has. Correct? Yeah. In Ayurveda, this is very, yeah, correct. These are the very common in the people. Yes, who... and in Ayurveda, for Vata Prakriti, we recommend that they must have half plate carbs. Quarter plate protein and quarter plate vegetables. Eating half plate carbs is recommended for vata prakriti because they need that good fat to lubricate the joints, muscles, and nerves. And I also recommend yeah. for vata prakriti to eat less bitter, astring, uh, uh, pungent, and astringent foods, and instead they must eat foods that are more sweet in taste, like sweet fruits, sweet vegetables, sour fruits and vegetables, and salty vegetables. Having foods that are warm, well cooked, mildly spicy, mildly salty is recommended for an ectomorph body type to ensure that there is little bit of moisture in the body to lubricate the joints, muscles, and nerves, and they don't get dehydrated that quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an ectomorph body type. Now, I so, have seven yeah. body types. So they yeah. say that you can be an endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph, and you can also be a combination of these body types. For example, you can be a combination of endomorph, ectomorph, okay. endomorph, mesomorph, or mesomorph, ectomorph. Right? So you can be dual body type as well. Right. Now for a dual body type, it's a little more difficult okay. to design Basically, a type yeah. chart because quite often you have conflicting characteristics. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, only like switching from one to other. Yes. Hmm. So, say a combination of an endomorph, mesomorph body type is called a kapha pitta prakriti, and they tend to have earth, water, fire imbalances very often. And a endomorph, mesomorph type would be a kapha uh, pitta prakriti. Sorry, endomorph, mesomorph is kapha pitta prakriti, which is earth, water, fire. Endomorph, ectomorph personality would be. Kapha, Vata, Prakriti, Earth, Water, Air, and Space. And then we have Mesomorph, Ectomorph personality, where it is Pitta and Vata, Prakriti, which is Fire, Air, and Space. I hope you can hear me, Dr. Arvind. Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the three so body can... types oh. as described by modern science. And these are the three basic Ayurvedic body types, Kapha, Pitta, and Vata. Then we have the dual body types, which is 
uh, combinations of two body types and then we have a three dosha body type where all three doshas are dominant for example endomorph ectomorph mesomorph is equally predominant in that person's body yeah correct mm. so this is how an athlete can maximize their performance by eating an ayurvedic diet suited for yeah. their body constitution instead of having one size fits all you can't do one size fits all like for example if you give an ectomorph half plate protein quarter plate carbs and quarter plate vegetables they won't be able to digest it to so give them half plate carbs quarter plate protein quarter plate vegetables similarly for an endomorph body type you have to give them yeah. half plate vegetables quarter plate protein quarter plate carbs so that they don't put on weight very quickly or have water retention issues but don't worry yes just by identifying the body type so, you can actually yeah. go one step forward to helping the athlete achieve their maximum optimum performance levels with the same energy yeah yeah and how to boost immunity for each i have a very simple yeah. remedy and recipe i know we wanted to discuss that like for example an endomorph body type yeah. i would recommend having 1 teaspoon of honey every day early in the morning empty stomach because that helps in dissolving the mucus and the sticky fluids in the body that makes them put on weight okay so endomorph body type should have 1 teaspoon honey every day and they can also have i see herbs with the honey like ginger pepper cinnamon and turmeric okay. then the ectomorph body type should focus on stimulating the digestion and their metabolism so they can have a tea they must stimulate the digestion and metabolism by having herbal tea made with cumin seeds fennel seeds coriander seeds cardamom a pinch of ajwain which is carom seeds uh, cinnamon grated ginger pepper star anise little turmeric because this will help in stimulating the metabolic fire in the stomach and at the same time improving the digestion because they tend to have bloating gases indigestion or colon health issues like constipation very often ectomorph body type yeah then for a mesomorph yes. body type you know i uh, would recommend focusing on the digestion the middle part of the body where the metabolic fire is because they tend to have acid reflux hyperacidity burning sensation indigestion and bloating quite easily so they must have herbal teas made with cumin seed fennel seeds coriander seeds cardamom and little bit of ajwain which is carom seeds Right yes doctor sarvan thank you so yeah so these are the three so, unlike how do you speak something about the yeah something about the intermittent fasting like which is quite trending in this like now now in generation so how it is like how it is essential and helpful in the aspect of ayurveda i'm glad you asked that question so for an endomorph body type intermittent fasting is recommended for 16 to 18 hours because they can go for long hours without eating food and they have a low metabolic fire they should stop yeah. eating food at 6 o'clock at sunset and next morning they can start eating food at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning when the agni or the metabolic fire in the Whoa. stomach is stimulated and they are able to digest food until then they should not eat food yes the second is mesomorph body type that yeah for them i recommend intermittent fasting for 14 hours 12 to 14 hours because okay. they tend to put on weight easily but they also lose weight easily so 14 hours of intermittent fasting is enough for them endomorph 16 to 18 hours uh pitta prakriti 14 hours is enough 14 to 16 hours is also good they should eat only for 8 hours and do intermittent fasting for 16 hours 14 to 16 The last is ectomorph body type, which okay. is a vata prakriti. They should not do intermittent fasting for more than twelve to fourteen hours because if they fasting for too long, it causes okay. dryness and roughness of their body. Yeah, because they are only like have a lack of everything. Yes, yes, they tend to get you know dry, yeah, rough, quite, yeah. and they have indigestion issues or dry, rough skin, dry, rough hair very easily, and body pain very easily. Ectomorph people. They, yeah they go through a lot of dehydration yes of yes for so them type. we recommend that you so eat yeah, more more regularly which is moisture based a lot of moisture should be there in the food it should be semi fluid well cooked 
It should have a lot of water content. Like I said, mildly spicy, mildly salty, and they must eat food for at least uh, you know every two hours, spread over like twelve hours, maybe like you know ten hours, so they can have five small meals instead of having three big meals. And even for a mesomorph body type, pitta prakriti, they can't stay hungry for too long. They can't tolerate hunger pangs. It causes irritability, anger issues for them. So for a pitta prakriti, it's recommended that you never skip meals. You must eat on time. And endomorph. Yeah, the time must be limited. Yeah, endomorph body type is lucky. They can go for hours together without eating food, and that is actually recommended for them. Fasting for a whole day without food and water helps them regulate their imbalances in the body. Good. And one more question, like I have for you, like uh, how this uh, this can help you in the muscular tissue pain and like uh, muscular recovery and like you can. Uh, keeping the good muscle health. Yeah. So in so Ayurveda, like, do you have any something like kind of advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good question. Uh, you know, for musculoskeletal issues, it's very important that athletes pay a lot of attention because their wear and tear is higher than a normal person. Their mm-hmm. wear and tear is higher because okay. they're actually working out more often. So th- they tend to. Uh, burn up more calories, more tissues, and sometimes end up burning fat and muscles faster than a normal person, right? So they must actually be replenishing yeah. calories and their muscle mass, their BMI, faster than the regular people because they are working out more. So to yes. repair their damaged tissues, muscles, and nerves on a daily basis, of course, we recommend physiotherapy. You know, which allows them to uh, increase blood circulation yeah. and release any kind of tension in their muscles yeah. and calves and. Uh, bones and joints. That is one. Second, Ayurveda has a series of treatment yeah. called Abhyangam. Is basically a self-medicated oil massage, which helps in reducing vata okay. imbalances caused due to movement. Athletes move a lot, right? They're constantly moving. Okay. They're running, working out. Yeah, moving. they move a lot. Yeah, because without movement, if they are not moving, so they are not. Yeah. Moving. So that movement causes dryness and friction between the bones, cells because. The fluids or the lipids or the lubricants get dried up faster for an athlete, right? So that's why they get this sound, you know, when they break their knuckles yeah. or when they're running, they get this tuck, 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 tuck noise when they're running. Sometimes, so we recommend yeah, doing quite common in people like who are like dehydrated. Yes, so we recommend doing abhyangam, which is a self-medicated oil massage and uh, medicated oils. So each oil is a concoction of sixty, seventy. When you do a massage with these oils, it increases blood circulation, lubricates joints, muscles, and nerves, and it also increases absorption of oils, medicated oils, through the pores, through which the sweat gets released. That gets absorbed into the bloodstream, which helps in collecting toxins from around the body and brings it towards the gut for elimination, increasing lubrication between joints, muscles, and nerves. Increases blood circulation, longevity, and that's also rest period for the act. After the massage, it's recommended that you don't do any workout for at least two to three hours. Take a nice warm shower, get some sleep. You know, get a lot of good food to eat. That's a great way for an athlete to recover from regular wear and tear. And especially if they're doing a lot of workouts and they want to achieve, like you know, state level, national level. International level or Olympic level, uh, you know, uh, events. They need to maintain the body like how we maintain our health. Yeah. Like you know, if you're do, going to go racing, car racing, the car has to be maintained and serviced literally every 50 kilometers. Correct? Every now and then, they stop yeah. at a pit where the car gets serviced, the tires get changed, Speaking. the fuel uh, gets you know uh, input yeah. into the car, and uh, the other you know parts of the car engine gets lubricated, right? Similarly, and also take pit yeah, stops. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, we just try to yeah to service their body. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. So there's a one question from from a girl. Like she was asking, ma'am, can you please suggest some remedies for the extra dry and sensitive skin type? Something for the extra so, dry and sensitive skin. So please just like enlight something. Yeah, something. Yeah. Okay, for Simply extra dry, dry and sensitive skin, skin type, so maybe. I recommend doing a massage with ghee on your face. Ghee is an excellent good fat uh, ingredient yeah. from the kitchen that helps in 
moisturizing your face your skin and lubricating your joints muscles for your full body i would recommend doing a massage with dhanvantaram tailam shira bala uh, which is you know ayurvedic oils or you can even use home cooked oils like you know uh, home cooking oils like cold pressed coconut oil sesame oil almond oil castor oil you can mix these oils warm it a little bit and do a full body massage for dry rough sensitive skin and you can also do a face massage with ghee because ghee is excellent for sensitive skin okay and this like um, dimple i just wanted to like add on something there's a girl sweetie she has asked like yeah if there any weird that cannot be maintained with oil massage yeah. moment in yesterday sentry so she was just like uh, just explaining ayurveda uh, ayurveda concept so yeah because everything has a like a multi multi way to just heal the injury in the problem so he was not mean that only massage can help him there's a lot of way we can rehabilitate which is something the muscle so i hope you got the question got it covered true yeah so one more question i have like uh, how the ayurveda can help in the like urban or uh, this one urban lifestyle like maybe like urban and rural life sorry could you just repeat that question how ayurveda can help Like a people like who who see in urban and like rural area, so exactly how we can so, be healthy and very useful for people. I'm glad. I'm glad you're asking that because Ayurveda is something that should be a way of life, not something that we go to when all methods have failed. Ayurveda helps you to prevent diseases, not just cure diseases. So you can use Ayurveda to eat food yeah. as per your prakriti in order to prevent diseases connected to your prakriti. That's one. You can also offset the trigger of genetic disorders, and you can also. Uh, maintain the optimum BMI, body mass index, and the weight, so that you don't end up, you know, collecting the fat and lifestyle disorders. Ayurveda is a great way to boost your immunity, to build your metabolism, to build longevity, to improve immu- uh, uh, what do you call it, the quality of your life on the whole. Ayurveda is something that should be practiced on a daily basis. You know, we have a series of rituals in Ayurveda called Dinacharya. Where we have rituals like oil pulling, brushing your teeth, scraping your tongue, gargling, gandusha that is called full body massage, powder massage to break subcutaneous stubborn fat, basti treatment, cleansing the colon, uh, sweating, shwedana process. These are methods in Ayurveda that we practice on a daily basis to rid our body of toxins. So that's something that I would recommend everybody to consider studying. We have a five day master class on Ayurveda that we conduct level one. and we have a series of other courses on level 2 herbalism uh ayurvedic cooking gynecological health and such so you can study ayurveda we have a code called xmas20 which gives you a 20% discount my website is www.pranabydimplejangra.com i would recommend that you guys go look at the syllabus consider studying ayurveda as a way of boosting your immunity and yeah dimple there's two more courses for yep. you so there's one uh, Person was asked, "Can we have a milk, turmeric, black pepper, honey, and gelatin and milk?" So, what did you ask? What's your take on this? So, thing? milk and turmeric is the person asking if we can have it at night before bed, uh, before sleeping. And he has asked, "Black pepper, honey, and gelatin at the uh, at night." Ah, uh, turmeric with milk, because at bedtime when you have milk with turmeric. the anti inflammatory effects of the turmeric is carried by the milk which is a carrier to the brain to the heart liver kidney intestines and all your bones muscles so have turmeric milk at bedtime early in the morning empty stomach you can have 1 teaspoon of honey which is an anti allergen anti bacterial uh, ingredient from nature add half teaspoon of grated ginger to it a pinch of pepper a pinch of turmeric and a pinch of cinnamon and some tulsi leaves take this raw do not mix this in hot water or milk this will cure bronchial issues the like cold cough allergy sinus and all of that so break it into two parts honey ginger pepper turmeric cinnamon in the morning with mint uh, tulsi leaves and you can have turmeric milk at bed time okay and this is another question this is a girl sweety khetan she is asking her kid is like 6 year old and her skin is very dry and always black is over the joint so and she is applying coconut oil over there but it is not working so do you uh, recommend something else Yes. Like yes. So I have one potato almond cream that I've recently launched, the Prana Skin Care Hair Care product. This is a night serum uh, repair cream. I would recommend you to try that. You can also use the code Xmas twenty to get a twenty percent discount. This is particularly good for dry skin. There is another face wash called Cinnamon Face Wash. 
the prana cinnamon face face wash followed okay. by the prana green tea uh you, you can also use the prana potato and almond uh, night serum cream these are excellent for helping you improve the quality of your skin especially if you have dry rough vata skin and you can also do a free skin care consultation with us our numbers mention number if you uh, you know send me a direct message i would advise you to do a complimentary skin care consult with us before you proceed forward on what you want to buy for your skin yeah uh let me one last question we can we was we'll take this one something for the gall bladder stones the one person three and this two vaja with with the so maybe for gall bladder stones ayurveda has very effective remedies uh, which helps you to dissolve the stones and also purify the blood and prevent recurrence of the gall bladder stones there is something called the hibiscus powder uh, which i had used in fact from my own father okay. you can take 1 teaspoon of the hibiscus powder dissolved okay. in half glass of warm water at bed time every night for bones to start dissolving mm. besides that i would recommend that you definitely do a consultation with an ayurvedic doctor so we can give you some more medicines based on the stage of the stone development if it's in an advanced stage of stone development which is causing excruciating damage to the organ then you might have to get a surgery done but we hope that you don't have to do a surgery we can help you dissolve the stones using ayurvedic medication so kindly do a consultation until the consultation completely avoid eating meat based products red meat white meat seafood uh, white salt white sugar eggs stop eating difficult to digest foods for some time until you meet the doctor so i hope that really helps you yeah uh, this one person manu social he has like question of most of the time i have a suffering from nose block something so like which can i do the help me yeah for nose block i would recommend that you do steam every day in the morning with hot water and a few drops of eucalyptus oil that's number 1 uh second you can also have a teaspoon of honey pinch of ginger pepper turmeric cinnamon uh early in the morning empty stomach and again at bed time third you can do a treatment called nasium nasium is basically a way of introducing medicated oil through the nostrils which helps in clearing the sinus passage okay. and healing it so yeah i guess we covered a lot of things and it was wonderful like discussing the thing with you yeah um, thank you so much dr arvind for hosting this conversation to, yeah it was pleasure to hear you all oh we had a great conversation if someone has any doubt with regards to the ayurveda can ping us or ping you will thank you so it. much thank you so much guys for listening in yeah, and thank you dr arvind for hosting yeah. me I hope we can connect again soon later. Thank you guys.